No reason to think that the child has been harmed. Again, police are now intensively looking for the mother and the child at this hour. We're live in the Mott Haven section of the Bronx. NJ Burke at Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thanks, NJ. We've got more breaking news this time in Lower Manhattan. We have new information about that pepper spray incident at the Manhattan Detention Center. We have now learned that several ambulances took 14 people away just a short time ago. All of them were told to have minor injuries. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einstein has just gotten to the scene and it has the latest for us. Josh? And Diana, we're still waiting for word on how many of those 14 people were prisoners and how many were correction officers. Uh, we can show you video as this was uh, unfolding in the past hour or so. This is the Manhattan Detention Complex. It is a facility of the Department of Correction here in the city where in, uh, prisoners uh, basically wait for trial uh, or are taken during the day when they are to appear in court. It is attached uh, to 100 Center Street to the Manhattan Criminal Court Complex here in Lower Manhattan. And this afternoon, there was a disturbance uh, which involved 14 people being hospitalized. Pepper spray was released by officers during that disturbance, but it's not clear right now uh, the extent or exactly what caused all of those injuries. And of course, as I said, of the 14 people hospitalized, how many of them were actually correction officers and how many of them were prisoners in the system here uh, at the building known colloquially as the tombs. Back to a live picture right now here in front of the building here on Center Street. You can see the ambulances are gone. We're waiting for word from the Department of Correction in terms of exactly what led to this and really what happened inside this building. And when we learn it, of course, we will uh, let you know. For now, we are live in Lower Manhattan. Josh Heidegger, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Okay, thank you, Josh. We've got day three now of the Republican National Convention, and we're seeing big protests outside the arena there. We're going to have more on that in just a second. But we want you to know this evening, it's going to be an evening dominated by the party's conservative voices. This afternoon, we again saw Donald Trump with his running mate, Mike Pence. They were at a rally. The pressure is on Pence tonight because he's going to deliver the keynote speech. But many will also be closely watching Ted Cruz, a former rival who has yet to endorse Trump. What is he going to say to the delegates? We have two reports beginning with Eyewitness News anchor Bill Ritter. And Bill, I know the protests happening outside, not inside. We're talking outside, right? Yeah, definitely outside in the protest zone, which is outside the, the Quicken Loan Sport uh, Arena, which is the queue, as they call it. Let's take you outside, show you the video uh, we just got into Eyewitness News. Uh, the cops taking no chances here. Someone was going to burn an American flag. And what happened was they started spraying, pepper spraying the crowd outside the, the arena. Uh, they were very, very uh, aggressive, as you can see in some of the uh, some of the video that you're watching right now. Uh, so far, this is the, absolutely the uh, the most uh, the most vocal and the roughest uh, protests we have seen so far. They've been pretty peaceful so far. Only a couple of arrests all week. We did anticipate uh, tensions would rise as uh, the convention entered at la its last two days. We do expect a lot of protests tomorrow when Trump gets uh, his acceptance speech and accepts the nomination. But as you can see, protests outside the arena. Now let's move on to the standard bearers themselves. Uh, Trump arriving back here in Cleveland again uh, with Governor Mike Pence of Indiana. Again, the key keynote speaker is Diana said. Uh, Trump and Spence this afternoon holding a rally near the Great Lakes Science Center near the arena. It's like right near Lake Erie. The Trump campaign setting up a rally today for the two men perhaps trying to build party unity. Meanwhile, a new development tonight in that plagiarism conspiracy. I saw make that controversy. Oh, it's going to sound a little bit like a conspiracy after this story uh, involving Melania Trump, a staff writer with the Trump organization, the business, not the campaign, uh, disclosing that she wrote the speech that Mrs. Trump give, gave. Melania Trump had said she wrote the speech, but now the staffer says she wrote it. After, this after Mrs. Trump read to her various passages that she liked from other speeches, one of them apparently from Michelle Obama's speech in 2008 to the convention. She said she didn't check to see where those passages that Mrs. Trump read to her over the phone came from. She says she offered to resign yesterday because of all this controversy, but she says Donald Trump refused to accept her resignation, saying that, quoting, everyone makes mistakes. Will this controversy end? We'll see. Meanwhile, the level of vitriol and anger at this convention is just plain disturbing. The crowd last night chanting, lock her up lock her up after Governor Chris Christie's speech calling Hillary Clinton guilty and calling her that dozens of times in a kind of mock trial with the audience. And today, a Trump advisor on Veterans Affairs and a delegate 
to this convention called for a Miss Clinton to face a firing squad. Now the Secret Service, we're told, is investigating that. It is, many believe, all of it way over the line. Our political board, Dave Evans, is here in the arena with that part of our coverage today. David? Bill, here at the 50% mark of this convention, we're noticing a lot of unusual things about this convention. First of all, the public seating areas uh, here inside the hall, uh, a lot of empty seats. That's rather unusual in a political convention. And of course, as you mentioned, all of the gloom and doom these last couple of days and these relentless attacks on Hillary Clinton. The interesting thing, we talked to several delegates today from New York, and they tell us they're not being negative, simply truthful. Last night, they chanted, lock her up, as Hillary Clinton hatred was on full display in Cleveland. And as First Lady, you viciously attacked the character of women who were sexually abused at the hands of your husband. Even sweet, quiet Ben Carson tied Clinton to Satan. Seriously. So are we willing to elect someone as president who has as their role model somebody who acknowledges Lucifer? But it was Governor Christie who took the angriest tone here in saying he'd like to prosecute Hillary Clinton. What's your verdict, guilty or not guilty? A day later at the New York Convention breakfast, delegates asked, what's wrong with trashing Hillary? Hillary's a joke. Carl Palladino, who ran for governor against Andrew Cuomo, today said they're being fair about Clinton, not negative. Anything that's anti-Hillary to us is not negative. What are you guys thinking? Uh, this has been fantastic for us. But some Republicans are concerned about the tone of this convention. Arizona's Jeff Flake tweeted out, Hillary Clinton now belongs in prison? Come on, we can make the case she shouldn't be elected without jumping the shark. And others predict the next two days will be different. I think a convention, you make, any of us make a mistake if we try to judge it day by day. You look at the totality. I think at the end of four days, this is going to be a positive event for Donald Trump. And of course, one of the big questions coming out of this convention is, can Donald Trump win by simply attacking Hillary Clinton? The experts tell us no. And they also, as Peter King said just a second ago, we will probably see tonight a pivot that we will see a more positive message coming from the vice presidential nominee and then also Donald Trump tomorrow night. We'll see. Bill? We will see indeed Dave Evans uh, from the convention arena along with me tonight. David, thank you. The vitriol aside, politically, can a candidate win the White House by focusing on just trashing the opponent instead of offering his or her own, own, own proposals on how to govern? Just ask President Mitt Romney if that works or not. Uh, meanwhile, we're just getting word that a couple of police officers have, in fact, because of that incident outside the protest, been assaulted, is what they're coming saying. Uh, there have been a couple minor injuries, and several people have been arrested. We'll see, of course, and keep track of any protests later tonight when the convention really gets going. When we come back at 6 o'clock, Diana, we'll take an up-close look at the keynote speaker for tonight, the vice presidential candidate, Governor Mike Pence. Diana, back to you. A lot of people anxious to hear what he's going to say, and Ted Cruz as well. That's going to be an interesting speech, too. Thank you, Bill. So here's a look at tonight's speaking schedule. A video speech first by Mark Rubio, followed by Ted Cruz, both of them former rivals of Trump's. And then Eric Trump, followed by Newt Gingrich, and then finally Trump's running mate, Governor Mike Pence. And you can watch all of those speeches streaming live at ABC7 NY and also on our free news app. Hillary Clinton fighting back against the relentless attacks against her at the Republican National Convention. Just a short while ago, Clinton sent out a tweet that read, if you think Chris Christie can lecture anyone on ethics, we got a bridge to sell you. Meantime, we have learned that Clinton may pick her running mate on Friday. Tonight, there's a fundraiser for Clinton in Brooklyn. Shade? Well, a daring rescue at a subway station in the Bronx goes horribly wrong. A woman gets shocked while trying to help another woman who fell off the platform and onto the third rail of the Gun Hill Road station. It's a lesson we can all learn from. Eyewitness News reporter Sandra Bookman spoke with that Good Samaritan. She's live in Williamsbridge. Sandra? Shade, Victoria Awusu Afreye was the first person to arrive at the tracks and try to help that woman. What she didn't pay attention to was exactly where the woman had fallen. That put her life in danger.
I just thought I, I have to help her. There's no way she can help herself to get up. Registered nurse Victoria Owusu Afriye says it never occurred to her not to help when she saw a woman who'd fallen onto the subway tracks yesterday morning at the Gun Hill Road station in the Bronx. So I just took off my backpack and I jumped down onto the track and I went to help her. And when I went to, to help her, I touched and the electricity went through me. And I realized when I came back to myself, I realized I can't help this person. Awuso Afriye says she was forced back onto the platform because the victim was lying on the electrified third rail. In this dramatic cell phone video, you can see the injured woman. You also see a police officer and others on the platform waiting for the electricity to be turned off so they too can hop down onto the tracks to help. People were calling 911, people were saying prayers, people were doing what they could. Finally, the officer and two good Samaritans, carefully avoiding the third rail, worked together to lift the unconscious woman back up onto the platform, where an officer reportedly performed CPR until EMTs arrived. Everybody did their part to help, and I was just happy to be part of that effort. Yeah, Victoria says that she, quote unquote, got a little singed, but there were no lasting injuries because of that shock. She says she'd do it again. As for the 48-year-old victim, we are told tonight that she had been at Montefiore Hospital, but was transferred today to another facility at this hour, her condition unknown. We're live this evening in Williamsbridge section of the Bronx. I'm Sandra Bookman, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Sandra, thank you. State and federal officials still trying tonight to figure out what caused that huge construction crane to collapse across the Tappan Zee Bridge. Luckily, no one was seriously injured. And tonight, one lane of traffic remains closed on the Westchester County bound side of the bridge. Governor Cuomo says he believes it will be days, not weeks, when all lanes on the bridge are fully reopened. Today, quite pleasant. Let's check in with meteorologist Lee Goldberg to see what's ahead, Lee. All right, Diana, words like dry and pleasant and comfortable, that's just not going to be a part of the forecast as we go into the next few days. Oh. We're going to see our humidity climb up a lot. Now, this evening's beautiful, 80s and upper 70s, and then after that, our numbers by mid-evening should be in the mid-70s. Humidity spikes later tomorrow, temperatures near 90, and it's a long-term heat wave. Directly with the forecast just a few minutes away. Shade, Diana, back to you for now. Okay, thank you, Lee. New details tonight about the future of that NYPD officer accused of driving drunk and killing a young man in Brooklyn. Plus, new at five, new efforts to protect people who work in jobs that are dangerous or don't pay properly. Also new at five, the new shark scare caught on camera along the Jersey Shore. What's the AccuWeather promise? That you'll always be the first to know what to expect. He's going to need that. That you'll always be the first to know when changes are coming. That you'll always have the AccuWeather team to keep you informed. Around the clock, so you can plan your life. That's the AccuWeather promise. Eyewitness News and the 7-Day AccuWeather Forecast, only on Channel 7. Whoa, <laughs> that doesn't look good. No, not you. Ordinary fuels can clog your engine with dirt. It's like lugging this around. It's dragging down your fuel economy. But over time, using new and improved BP gasoline with Invigorate helps clean up that dirt, like hundreds of scrubbing brushes. So that means a cleaner engine, which helps you get more miles per tank. I'll be here if you need me. New BP gasoline with Invigorate, our best fuel ever. Chevrolet is the most awarded car company of the last two years. Wow. Very impressive. When you find a bonus tag at your Chevy dealer, you get additional savings. That's awesome. Anything that's bonus is beautiful. That's nice. I'm in love. I don't know what to tell you. I'll take them all. It's all happening at the Chevy Summer Sell Down. She's going to make me sign right now. Can we sign with you? <laughs> find your tag and get 2000 total cash allowance on select cruise vehicles in stock. Or current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Cruise for around $169 a month. Visit your local Chevy dealer. One American Park is larger than Yellowstone, Yosemite, Grand Canyon, and Glacier National Parks combined. And that's not the only thing you can only find in New York State. You can find it all only in New York. New York, it's all here. It's only here. Plan your summer vacation at ILoveNY.com. Celebrate Brooklyn with Channel 7. The best venue in New York. It blew me away. It's the Brick Celebrate Brooklyn Festival. This is amazing. Good time celebrating Brooklyn. Check out this week's hot lineup. Get the full schedule at ABC7 and Watch.
with this online. Faster. Let's move the crew to Brooklyn. Burning building left their home. Smarter. That's where the brunt of the storm could be. They see flooding. Better. Uh, check this out. You got to see this. New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 11. The suspect in a hit run that killed a mother and seriously injured her daughter in Queens appeared in court today. 58-year-old Hiram Boodoo is being held without bail on manslaughter and murder charges. Police say he was behind the wheel of a speeding SUV when it slammed into a red Toyota in South Ozone Park on Sunday. The impact sent the victim and her 9-year-old daughter flying through the back windshield. New at 5, Governor Cuomo is making his task force to combat worker exploitation permanent. He signed an executive order today. The task force already exposed poor working conditions at nail salons. Eyewitness News reporter Stacey Sager with what the group will focus on next. Like many New Yorkers, I work very hard each day to build a better future for me and my family. Yet Alejandro Mendoza says that was nearly impossible working here at Empire Szechuan Valley on the Upper West Side. Mendoza, one of six workers from this restaurant, now splitting a total of $200,000 in back wages. For me, this has been a life-changing situation. For its part, the restaurant here on Columbus Avenue insists it did pay its workers fairly, that it settled with the state to avoid a long legal fight. Nevertheless, Governor Cuomo maintains immigrant workers are often exploited the most, and his task force to help them will now be permanent and expand. It was created exactly a year ago after the New York Times did an explosive investigation revealing widespread abuse at nail salons. Today, the governor insisting that was just the beginning. Because these challenges are not going to go away. So far, the task force has recovered more than $4 million in back wages for more than 7,500 workers across the state. Well, now it'll look more broadly at other industries. Every place from the airports, where workers have loudly protested, to the more silent areas of abuse, such as dry cleaning businesses. The federal EPA says that PERC is a likely carcinogen a likely carcinogen. And we have workers who work with it every day with little training and little protection. For now, workers like Alejandro just hoping to reverse a bad situation. This is why I have not been able to save for my future and barely can put money on the table for my family. Which the underpaid and overworked say they've known all too well. I'm Stacy Sager, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. The parents of a toddler killed by an alligator at Disney World say they are focused on moving forward and healing. Matt and Melissa Graves say they don't plan to sue the Florida theme park over their son's death. Last month, two-year-old Lane Graves died when an alligator pulled him into the water. After Graves' death, Disney World put up the barriers and warning signs on their waterfront areas. The entertainment industry is paying tribute to Gary Marshall, the man behind one of the most iconic TV shows, many of them, and movies of the past 50 years. Marshall died yesterday. He was 81 years old. He suffered a series of strokes. He was the creator of sitcoms like Happy Days, Mork and Mindy, and he directed amazing movies like Pretty Women, Woman and Beaches. Pretty Woman star Richard Gere says Marshall had a heart of purest gold and a soul full of mischief. And Happy Days star Ron Howard Howard called Marshall a world-class boss and mentor. He was also a friend to one of our own yes. here at WABC, yeah. uh, Mike, Mike. Bencevenga, Mike Bencevenga, yeah. and you know they had such a bond because yeah. they're both funny people. Yeah, so he they was had saying just how together. giving he was, yeah. and uh, would always help others, and was just so passionate. So a lot of people uh, certainly saddened. By yeah, his visited yeah. Mike this afternoon. He just told stories about just Gary, and story. I just I could listen to him all afternoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he yeah. brought a lot of joy to us, especially growing up. I mean, all those shows, yeah. and wonderful movies. So outside we go this afternoon and evening as we switch gears to a weather forecast that's changing. So if you have a chance this afternoon to whether you've been doing the evening jog thing, or you've been doing work around the yard, it's going to change in the coming evening. So really take advantage of the comfort now, the low humidity, really the safe conditions because things get a little dicey the next several days. Not necessarily because of storming, it's just because of the high heat. So a south wind is kicked in, a little bit of a sea breeze. Otherwise, the wind's going to be very calm tonight. We're around 80 degrees right now and the high in the middle 80s. We make a run at 90 tomorrow. So average today, but above average for the foreseeable future. Sunset tonight at 822. Hudson Valley, we started out with low and middle 50s today. We've climbed about 30 degrees in New Paltz at 83. Hopewell Junction, 83 degrees. 80 Armong. Westport,
Connecticut at 82. It's Nanuet at 84 degrees. Same thing in Stanford. The cool wind off the ocean, which is about 76 degrees, still 78. Islip, 81. Howell, New Jersey, and Newark's coming in at 82. Sunshine goes to clear skies during the overnight moonlit skies again. Sunshine tomorrow. You know, the humidity isn't oppressive tomorrow, but it's a notch higher than today. And we have our temperatures 5 degrees warmer, so it is very warm tomorrow. There are a couple of patchy clouds around right now, but high pressure is now pulling in. It's shielding us from this front to the west for now, but that high dives to our south tomorrow, so we start the warm-up. It's a transition day tomorrow, and then that high pulls offshore, and then we open the floodgates for the high humidity, the big-time heat. And also, with a front off to our north, some big storms are going to be going through upstate New York later Friday into Friday evening, and a few of those may take a dive toward the southeast, cruise through the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, and eastern Long Island, and it's a close call even with New York City. That would be late day to the early evening, so think about that. If, let's say you're getting away to the shore or headed out to the island or up to New England or the Catskills. Meanwhile, tonight we're still comfortably cool in the suburbs, mid and upper 60s in the city, and now we're nearing 90 tomorrow. There will be a cooling sea breeze again in the afternoon hours, but inland areas will get pretty hot. 70 degrees tonight, clear and calm, but again, still comfy away from the city. We're 99% of full coming off that full moon last night, the buck or thunder moon. 89 tomorrow, mostly sunny, very warm, and a bit more humid, but the humidity really noticeable tomorrow night into the day on Friday. So coming up at 530, well, we have Strong storms across the area Friday night will deal with that. Record highs of possibility in this heat stretch and maybe a four or five day heat wave. So we can't get one heat wave for the first month of summer and now we may get a really long stretch of hot weather. Seven day with a forecast in our next half hour. Diana and Chade, back to you for now. New at five, the rescue firefighters in New Jersey had to make while a woman was playing Pokemon Go. You're going to want to see this. Plus, a warning at Rutgers tonight after three recent crimes on and around campus. Zero Bates is a farmer in residence, the city's first. She lives at this development called Irby, and she farms its land. I'm Lauren Glassberg with this unique story coming up. Next Wheel of Fortune, it's a wheel you won't want to miss. You might want to call your neighbors. Might be something in the air tonight. Tonight at 7.30. Right here on ABC7. Hey kids, you need to be safe on the streets and online. When you're online, know the difference between cute and creepy. And don't just sit there. If someone asks to meet you in person, report it because honey, that's creepy. And don't post anything too personal or embarrassing. Don't be that kid who gets suspended for posting something silly online, child. And always talk to a trusted adult about what you're doing online. Let's work together to protect our children. Protect Our Children is sponsored by your Tri-State Ford dealers. It's that time of year again, and today's lesson, my untouchable back-to-school values. Like my Bobopedic 9 Twin Extra Long Mattress. Sleep like a genius for only $2.99. Every student needs a desk. Get my Trayton in two colors, or my Chadwick in three colors, each only $1.99. My Austin dresser, mirror, nightstand, and queen headboard, all for only $6.99. Class dismissed. <laughs> where should you start when you're told you have cancer? Start with a specialist. Start where you'll find advanced technology, precision treatment options, and truly compassionate care. Start here with a team of experts who treat only cancer. Every stage, every day. It's not one thing we do. It's the only thing we do. Start at Cancer Treatment Centers of America in Philadelphia. The evolution of cancer care is here. Learn more at cancercenter.com slash experts. Appointments available now. Long weekends have independence written all over them. Your weekend of summer fun is just 90 minutes away. Dining, shopping, history, parks, and waterfronts. Plan your trip at visitphilly.com. Excuse me. I Hi. think there's a misprint. Oh, model year end clearance event. Looks right to me. Shouldn't it be clear? Clearly, it is time to get a great deal and a reward card on this turbocharged Jetta. Got to make room for the 2017 models. It is a clearance event. Why is that so hard for people to understand? Seems clear to me. Clear to me. Ready for a test drive? Whatever you want to call it, don't miss the Volkswagen model year end event. Hurry in and lease a 2016 Jetta S for $129 a month after a $1,000 bonus. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Caitlin? ABC7 and your Tri-State Ford dealers thank you for helping protect our children. We are back and we've got more 
breaking news. Take a look at Ooh. that. That is a junkyard fire in Canarsie, and it is sending up a lot of thick black smoke, and Shannon Sohn is above it all, and you can see it too, right, Shannon? Yeah, Diana, I'm telling you what, this fire started quickly. There was nothing here, and then within seconds, we could see black smoke and flames literally for miles. This is all happening at Jet Auto Wreckers on Ralph Avenue, just off of Preston Court here in Canarsie. Now, we're showing you this because when I say this happened quickly, the fire department is still just pulling up to the scene. So a huge pile of flammable materials that is burning out of control. Fire department hasn't even attempted to get water on it yet. At this point, at least, there are no injuries. Reporting live over Canarsie. Shannon Zone, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. New at 5, firefighters come to the rescue of a woman trying to catch Pokemon characters who ended up stuck in a tree in New Jersey. The woman climbed a tree last night, yes, while playing Pokemon Go inside the Eglinton Cemetery in Clarksboro. Well, she had trouble getting down, so she called 911. The fire department posting photos of the incident on Facebook and advising players to be careful not to put themselves in bad situations. Exactly. A lot of buildings in New York City have supers, they have handymen, but not many have farmers. One building in Staten Island, though, breaking new ground. Eyewitness News reporter Lauren Glassberg shows us how. This is a commercial urban farm. About a tenth of an acre right in the middle of a brand new apartment complex called Irby in the Stapleton section of Staten Island. 900 apartments, shops, restaurants, and an abundance of crops. We're packing a lot in here. Zero Bates lives here and farms the land. She's a farmer in residence right in the city. Her position was created by the developer to ensure that this urban farm flourishes. There's no reason why developers wouldn't want to create farms in their complexes. Just from what we're seeing so far, it's, it's a huge attraction. And the hope is that fresh food is a way of life for this community. These are string beans. They've been really prolific. The food grown here is then sold at a farmer's market once a week on site. And it's also sold directly to restaurants here at the development and around Staten Island. We have lots of customers coming from the building. Um, and also customers from the North Shore and other parts of Staten Island. There's also a communal kitchen with a chef in residence who teaches cooking classes and atop one of the buildings, an apiary. Zero's husband, Asher Landis, is the beekeeper. It's beautiful, it's, uh, it's tranquil, a little bit quiet. We get to see the ships roll in and roll out, and the bees love it up here. And the honey made here will also be sold on site, sweetening this residential experience. People are really hungry for green space and, and hungry for fresh food, so to have that right here is, yeah, special. On Staten Island, Lauren Glassberg, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. This special, that's great. It's amazing. Well, an NYPD cop charged with driving drunk and killing a man fired. Do at five, the first reaction from that former officer about the crash. Protesters making a scene in Manhattan where they chained themselves together that led to arrests. And a crackdown on sidewalk book stands on the Upper West Side. Why police are clearing out the vendors who have been there for decades. on a Nissan. Save big with 0% for 72 months on Altima and Rogue and no payments for 90 days. Plus, get 500 bonus cash or zero in on a low $179 per month lease on Rogue. Hurry, now's the time to zero in on big savings. 0% financing, no payments for 90 days and $500 bonus cash and soon. Fios is not cable. We're wired differently. So we wired the Wagner's house with 100 meg internet, which means that in the time it takes Mr. Wagner to pour a 20 ounce cup of coffee, Tommy can download 30 songs and Jan can upload 120 photos. 12 seconds. That's the power of fiber optics. And right now you can get 100 meg internet with equal upload and download speeds, TV and phone for just $69.99 per month online. Cable can't offer internet speeds this fast at a price this good. Only Fios can. We know quitting smoking isn't easy. If you're a Medicaid member, medications to help you quit are covered. Ask your doctor for help today and quit smoking for good. For more help, call 1-866-NY-QUITS. The Ford Freedom Sales Event is on. It's our biggest event of the year. 
0% financing is back on a huge selection of Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. Plus, get an extra 1,000 smart bonus on specially tagged vehicles. That's freedom from interest and freedom to choose with Ford, America's best-selling brand. I'm free, baby. Now get an escape with 0% financing for 72 months or at least for just $179 a month at your local Ford dealer. Quick Draw from the New York Lottery draws New Yorkers together in a fun way, unlike attending a dog wedding. These things are the worst. At least the cake's good. The cake is dog food. So get drawn together with Quick Draw. Do you see a problem we need to investigate? Tip off the investigators. Call, email, or reach out on Facebook. No one exposes wrongdoing and waste like Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And we are back with breaking news. If you're seeing a lot of smoke in Brooklyn right now, this is the reason why. We got a junk fired, junkyard fire that is burning in Canarsie, and you can see firefighters have now arrived on the scene. Smoke has turned from black to white, and they are spraying it from at least two directions from what I can see there. Uh, we've got Newscopter 7 above the scene, and we're going to keep an eye on this throughout this broadcast. Sorry. New information today. An officer charged in a deadly drunk driving crash has been fired by the NYPD. Police Commissioner Bill Bratton coming down hard on Nicholas Botka. New at 5, Botka's attorney reveals new details about the now former cop. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson has a story from Brooklyn. Kimberly. Well, Sade, today Police Commissioner Bill Bratton didn't mince words, saying it's a done deal. Top brass fired Nicholas Botka, who lives here with this fam with his family. This investigation is widening. Authorities are not only retracing Botka's steps, but two of his drinking buddies from that night. Fellow officers all from the same precinct, which Bratton vows will now be carefully scrutinized. That type of behavior uh, will not be tolerated. Appropriate words from Police Commissioner Bill Bratton as we watched investigators return to the Whiskey Brooklyn on North 11th Street looking for possible surveillance video. Sources to Eyewitness News, this is where Nicholas Botka was drinking last Saturday, a night that ended in pure horror. The suspect was allegedly drunk, lost control of his SUV, hit and seriously injured three people, and killed MIT student Andrew Esquivel. Batka wasn't alone as he partied at the Williamsburg hotspot. Police say he was with two fellow officers who are now on modified assignment, off the streets, stripped of their guns and badges. So we want to take a close look at these two officers as to what was going on in that particular establishment or other establishments they might have visited during the course of the evening to determine how much were they drinking and were in fact they driving after ingesting significant amounts of alcohol. After the deadly crash on Bedford Avenue around 3 Saturday morning, Botka refused to take a breathalyzer, tried to get out of his SUV, but witnesses held him there. The 28-year-old has now hired attorney Michael Farkas. He's absolutely distraught and heartbroken, and we're going to work very hard to make sure that every fact surrounding this case comes to light. Top brass isn't waiting today. The commissioner fired Botka. The former correction officer started working in the NYPD's transit division in January of 2015. His short time with the department worked against him. I am taking advantage of his probationary status to fire him forthwith rather than having to go through uh, administrative trials, which would normally be the case. I don't think anyone's surprised by that decision, but it really has no bearing on how we're going to handle his case. And tomorrow morning, Nicholas Botka is scheduled to appear in court. We will be there. For now, we're live in Greenpoint. Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Kimberly, thank you. New at 5, a three-month state of emergency has been declared in Turkey following the failed military coup. President Erdogan said that the uh, declaration was made to protect the democracy and is not intended to hurt people's rights or freedoms. Military units launched, uh, launched the attempted coup last Friday, but were stopped by security forces and government loyalists. President Erdogan said purges within the military ranks will continue. New information tonight in the case of an elderly U.S. Marine veteran rescued from a life of squalor. The man accused of holding him captive, Perry Cong Conglio, was arraigned overnight. He's facing multiple charges, including unlawful imprisonment, larceny, and drug, and drug possession. This has been one of the most read stories on ABC7 all day. Police say that the uh, suspect kept 86-year-old David McClellan in a tiny hotel room in the town of Highlands Upstate to collect his social security and pension money, plus his food stamps.
Horrible what he did to him. Ten people arrested during a protest at police union headquarters today. Like Occupy Wall Street, their demand's not entirely clear. Some saying they want the PBA unfunded. But their frustrations today were quite real. Eyewitness News reporter Diana Rocco has more. Outside the Patrolman's Benevolent Association headquarters in Lower Manhattan Wednesday, making demands on the police union. It protects killer cops who murder black people. We are here today to occupy space in a militant way to show that black people are ungovernable. Inside, 10 members of the Black Youth Project 100 chained themselves to the electronic turnstile entrances on the first floor for nearly an hour. Their arms chained together and wrapped in PVC pipe, forcing police to cut through the pipe and chains to free them. While dozens of officers guarded the plaza at 125 Broadway and filled the lobby, the protesters from Million Hoodies for Justice and Black Youth Project 100 interrupted the workday, trying to get the attention of the union president, Pat Lynch. We were able to actually walk directly behind him and he heard our voices. They were escorted out in handcuffs to awaiting police vans, some still chanting as they were taken out while onlookers waited to get in the building. The protesters' anger is misplaced. It's misplaced on the shoulders of police officers and even the PBA, who's an advocate for police officers to make sure their rights are protected. Police officers every day protect their right to protest. I'm Diana Rocco, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. A troubling discovery in Philadelphia, a car found filled with explosives and drugs and two children inside. Mm. Police officers were investigating a minivan that was double parked last night when they smelled a strong odor of marijuana. Well, they say a man and two children were inside the van and improvised explosives uh, were just in clear sight. Police say they were homemade sticks of dynamite. The man is now under arrest. The state of New Jersey has filed action against a Newark pet store accused of selling sick puppies. The six-count complaint claims just pups, pet store, and its owner, Vincent Lasaco, misled customers about the health of the puppies, and they refused to reimburse customers for puppies that died or needed medical care. Officials say the store sold at least 55 sick puppies. New York Senator Charles Schumer wants to make sure you don't get burned this summer by misleading advertising for sunscreen. The senator is calling on the FDA to launch an investigation into marketing of false claims about SPF. 43% of sunscreens tested in a recent Consumer Reports study failed to meet the level of sun protection that was listed on the bottle. We would want two things. Immediately, labeling to be appropriate. Second, a true standard, and they have to meet that standard to say it's real sunscreen and protects your skin. Now, companies are required to test their own products for SPF levels, but Senator Schumer says tests are rarely confirmed or retested by the FDA. New at 5, two cases of rabies have been found in animals in New Jersey. Middlesex County health officials say a bat and raccoon found in North Brunswick tested positive for rabies. These are the first rabbit animals found in North Brunswick this year. Health officials urge residents who see any animals with unusual behavior to report it to police. Well, want to spend an afternoon at the park? The local town now charging people to play on their grounds. Students on alert to armed robberies near Rutgers campus prompt students to take safety precautions into their own hands. Plus, called on camera, good Samaritans come to the rescue of a driver moments after his car flipped over. And keeping an eye on the winds across the five boroughs, they're not that strong, but out of the south at around 13 miles an hour near Canarsie. So some of that smoke from the junkyard fire may go toward Bushwick, Bed-Stuy, maybe East New York and Brownsville as well. This is all about now high pressure right offshore right there. As it exits heat, humidity really going to be hot over the next several days. Long-term heat wave in the seven-day AccuWeather forecast. And that's coming up next on Eyewitness News at 5. Closed captioning is sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan. For the closest location, visit RaymoreFlanagan.com. At the Joseph A. Bank Save and Style event, get up to 70% off almost everything in the store, including Tropical Blend sport coats for just $119. Plus, take an extra 40% off all clearance, only at Joseph A. Bank. No doubt, the road to the conventions has been, well, extraordinary. So what will happen next? Well, this week in Cleveland, America turns to NBC News and the best political team anywhere for the Republican National Convention on NBC. If you're approaching 65, now's the time to get your ducks in a row to learn about Medicare and the options you have. You see, Medicare doesn't cover everything. Only about 80% of your Part B medical expenses. The rest is up to you. 
So if 65 is around the corner, think about an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company. Like all standardized Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans, they help cover some of what Medicare doesn't pay and could save you in out-of-pocket medical costs. So don't wait. Call to request your free decision guide and gather the information now to help you choose a plan later. These types of plans let you pick any doctor or hospital that takes Medicare patients. And there's a range of plans to choose from, depending on your needs and your budget. So if you're turning 65 soon, call now and get started. Because the time to think about tomorrow is today. Go long. Being the dad of five young children can be exhausting. Thankfully, my all-new Chrysler Pacifica makes my life a little easier. And with stow-and-go seating, there's plenty of room for all the stuff. You're welcome. How's the vacuuming? Let's go. Let's go. Put it in there. Come on. Kids. Let's go. Daddy's exhausted. Current owners or lessees of Honda or Toyota vehicles get a low-mileage lease on the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica for $229 a month. At the Joseph A. Bank Save and Style event, get up to 70% off almost everything in the store, including Tropical Blend Sport Coats for just $119. Plus, take an extra 40% off all clearance, only at Joseph A. Bank. Eyewitness News hits the streets early. I'd like to make acquaintance this morning. And takes These the These are first live pictures. To bring you all the news. This morning. Developing this morning. Channel 7 Eyewitness News this morning. A lotto jackpot of almost $7 million. Tonight on ABC7 NY. The Rockland County town of Orangetown is implementing park fees for out-of-towners. City leaders say they have to cover the costs of maintaining the parks. So here's the breakdown for you. Non-resident adults will pay $250 for a yearly pass, $150 for seniors, $165 for kids 12 to 18, and $150 for kids 11 and under. The fees will get you access to Veterans Memorial Park, Independence Park, Pilgrim Court, Stoughton Park, Tappan Park, and Cherry Brook. A star from the long-running TV drama Beverly Hills 90210 offering an intimate look into her battle against breast cancer. 45-year-old actress Shannon Doherty shared a series of candid Instagram photos yesterday detailing her struggle with cancer and showing that she recently shaved her head. Doherty revealed she had breast cancer last September. Mm. Well, it's a true display of people helping people. A group of Good Samaritans rescued a driver whose convertible flipped on a South Carolina highway. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Jonathan Jansen says he was driving to work with the top down yesterday morning when a library book in his back seat flew up behind him. He says he lost control, crossed several lanes of traffic, and flipped his car. More than a dozen strangers stopped to help. All I remember is the initial hit and then just weightless and then and then just laying there and I'm like I'm all right I can move my legs my arms all right here we go thank goodness Boy, so Jansen, he's yeah he's very lucky Jansen says he owes his life to those good Samaritans yeah new at five police move in and clear out sidewalk book vendors in Manhattan the reason for the crackdown on these neighborhood staples and don't feed the birds the beach where you could get hit with a hefty fine for giving scraps to seagulls Online. Faster. Let's move the crew to Brooklyn. Burning building left their home. Smarter. That's where the brunt of the storm could be. They see flooding. Better. Uh, check this out. You got to see this. New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 11. Chevrolet is the most awarded car company of the last two years. Wow. Very impressive. When you find a bonus tag at your Chevy dealer, you get additional savings. That's awesome. Anything that's bonus is beautiful. That's nice. I'm in love. I don't know what to tell you. I'll take them all. It's all Tomorrow morning at 10 on ABC7. There's a new war on the Jersey Shore over feeding seagulls on the boardwalk. If you give birds food in Ocean City, you could face a fine of up to $500 and up to 90 days in jail. This is serious. Yeah. Police used to just give out warnings, but they decided to up the ante because birds are getting aggressive and they're diving for food. Okay, we're not talking birds. We're talking a shark sighting off the Jersey Shore. A Monmouth Beach police officer got footage of at least six three to four foot long sharks swimming what? about 10 feet off the Monmouth Beach yesterday morning. Oh, no. oh yeah. 
there were no people in the water at the time. Though mm -hmm. beaches in that area remained open to swimmers today, but that's a shark uh, sighting there. I don't know about getting Lee? that water right there. Lee, what do you make of that? Water looks so inviting, yeah, too. Yeah, it does. You know, <laughs> at, at Except least. for the shark. The shark is saying, yes, it does. Come on in. Yeah, well, and the temperature is going to tell you to do that tomorrow, too, as it, it begins to skyrocket. Luckily, you know, the visibility is good in terms of calm seas. Be able to spot the sharks gets a little choppier tomorrow afternoon as winds pick up to about 15 knots out of the south and waves go to about three feet. Water temperature is very inviting as well, but the rip current risk will also be moderate, so keep that in mind. So we've got some sizzle building. You'll notice it beginning tomorrow near 90, moderate humidity, and then really taking off tomorrow night into Friday. We may challenge some records over the the weekend. Occasional thunderstorms. I wouldn't call it a stormy stretch, though. Really bright on the west side. What we're not seeing are the leaves blowing in the wind. Not the nice breeze we had yesterday. A little bit along the coast, but it's a calmer evening and it's pretty warm out there, but at least the humidity is nice and low. By tomorrow, we'll call it low to moderate humidity, upper 80s to around 90 degrees. Definitely a very warm day. Not oppressive. That uh, really comes later on Friday and into the weekend. So, Yankee game tonight. Nice at the stadium. Looks like a south wind going calm, about 84 degrees at first pitch. Here are the numbers tonight. You know, outside of the urban areas, which hold around 70 degrees, it's really comfortably cool once again. Still could actually open the windows for one more night in the 50s to around 60 degrees. Had some low 50s last night in places like Monticello and Poughkeepsie. During the afternoon hours tomorrow, 90 Poughkeepsie, 86 in the park. We may hit the 89 degree mark around 1 or 2 in the afternoon and then the sea breeze backs off and keeps the beaches nice and comfortable during the afternoon hours. The air quality is still okay tomorrow and then gets unhealthy later in the week into the weekend. UV index at a nine and the pollen count is low to moderate. So here's your seven day accurate forecast. Near 90 tomorrow, call it moderate humidity and then the 90 degree stretch for days. There might be a strong thunderstorm on Friday afternoon. The best chance of that is going to be north and east of New York City, especially during the later afternoon and early evening hours. Part of the area may just miss these storms. 95 Saturday, moderate humidity, high humidity in 95 on Sunday, feeling like 105. And then a couple storms start to come back on Monday. But look at that stretch. I mean, we're we're not talking two, three day stretch of 90 degree weather. We're talking at least five days. And even the fronts that are coming past us on Monday and Tuesday will not give us any relief. As we go into the last part of the July and early August, the pattern looks hot. So summer is here and here to stay. Get sizzle, ready for it. sizzle, sizzle. You got it. Okay, thanks, Lee. Mm -hmm. Diana. But five sidewalk book stands have been a staple here on the Upper West Side for decades. But now police are cracking down on vendors, clearing out a lot of their stock. Iowa News reporter A.J. Ross has details on what's behind the crackdown. This is what I've been doing for surviving. Kirk Davidson isn't a rich man, but for more than 30 years, he sold these priceless gems on the Upper West Side. The love for books is a special love. From literary classics to trendy bestsellers, Davidson's display is now just a fraction of what it used to be. Since police swept in twice over the past couple weeks and removed hundreds of books he and others routinely tied on tables overnight. I know there's better things they can do in a city like this. And for them to spend that money to watch me sell books, I was, I was threatened. Now I feel honored. The massive sweep along Broadway between 72nd and 74th Street was supported by city councilwoman Helen Rosenthal, but has drawn criticism from some longtime residents and book lovers. I've been living on this on 72nd Street for 18 years. This is like a part of the Upper West Side. It gives it life. It's so beautiful. I get so many books. I give them so many books. Although anything left unattended on city property is subject for removal, vendors here call the ongoing police presence excessive, with officers reportedly working rotating shifts, keeping an eye out for any unattended books. They shot three eight-hour shifts out here for a whole week straight now, watching him sell books. They've had cops here 24-7 staring at them and give, uh, kicking them out. It's like a fascist state. So now we have to stay out here all night to man the tables. Through a written statement, council member Rosenthal says she welcomes book vendors, but they have to be respectful and follow the rules. We're just out here trying to make a living. And that was AJ Ross reporting. We are following breaking news, a big fire burning now in Westchester County, and that is a house that you see there in flames. Shannon Stone above it all right now, Shannon. 
Yeah, you can see the flames licking up through the eaves of this house. It's a two and a half story house at 20 Claremont Avenue in Mount Vernon. This is a second alarm fire. You can see the firefighters have made entry into the house, but they've got tower ladders up in operation as well. It seems like it started on the top floors of this home and it is far from being under control. At this point, there is no word on any injuries, but firefighters have their work cut out for them. Reporting live over Mount Vernon, Shannon Sohn, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Okay, they sure do. Thanks, Shannon. A safety alert centered on Rutgers University after a string of crimes. Tonight, what students are doing to protect themselves. And on this show, new at 6, the Eyewitness News investigators takes a closer look at the crane that collapsed on the Tappan Sea Bridge yesterday. It turns out it's the newest high-tech crane. We have video of the crane moments before the dramatic collapse. And we hear from a woman who saw her mother hit by a falling brick. It's all coming up next at 6. Can the Goldbergs, Modern Family, Blackish, and the 2016 Republican Convention, followed by New York's number one news, Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 11. Tonight's preview is sponsored by Jeep. New at 5, Rutgers University issuing a warning tonight after a string of recent crimes. They are urging students to take safety measures after two armed robberies and a burglary. Tonight, students say dangerous conditions have them already taking precautions. New Jersey reporter Tony Yates is in New Brunswick with details. Tony? And Shaw Day, those two crimes where people were attacked, those students were actually walking by themselves and it was nighttime. And some students are telling us today that's a chance that they simply do not take anymore. I live in a house with a bunch of other students, you know. We don't like to like travel alone anymore at night because we see how dangerous it could possibly be. It's become protocol now for many Rucker students not wanting to be an easy target for criminals. The evening of July 18th, three different incidents occurred. A burglary in the early evening, a robbery attempt, and one person held at knife point by two perpetrators. Rutgers University police are investigating the burglary inside a campus building. Someone broke in and stole several items of value. New Brunswick police are investigating the more violent robberies. Officials say at 10.20 p.m., a student walking alone near Comstock and Commercial, a few blocks away from the campus, was approached by a man who ordered she turn over her valuable items. She refused and was knocked to the ground. The man ran off. The school sent alerts. Students are paying attention. Generally, we try to make sure our doors are locked at all times, and we're traveling in groups, so that way, like, there's less likely to be an altercation. Just seven minutes after the woman was attacked, another student was approached by two men, one threatening him with a knife, while the other searched his pockets and stole items of value. They then jumped in a car and drove away. This crime also happening blocks away from campus near Hamilton and Division, where several houses are typically rented by students. We see the community, you know, trying to react positively towards it to try to move towards, you know, a, like a better community for families. But now, recently with all this uh, crime activity, it's just really hard to handle, to right. be honest, yeah. So far, no one's been arrested in any of these crimes. And that uh, alert that the school sends out to tell students that something has happened, it always contains tips to help students keep themselves safe. For now, we're live here on the campus of Rutgers University in New Brunswick, Tony Yates, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Tony. A woman is there when her mother is hit by a falling brick. Tonight, she tells us how her mom is doing. Eyewitness News at 6 starts right now. This is New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness.